I'll never forget the accident scene itself. A mother and four young children killed in a head-on collision up in Westchester. Oh my God, all of her children, all of her kids? Wow, you just, you can't wrap your head around that. I just really pray for his little boy and hope he pulls through. Well, state police now saying there was a bottle of vodka in Diane Schuler's minivan. What was going through her mind? What was happening in that car? My little girl. Gone. There are still more questions than answers. What we do know, unfortunately, is that two Long Island families are in mourning today. You were reporting in Westchester at the time. I mean, you were there, you said, heard it on the scanner, right? Yeah. So I was sitting at my desk uh, that day, and the assignment desk is right next to my desk. And I'm working on a story, and all of a sudden I hear out of my left ear on the scanner, an accident on the Taconic. So I'm like, all right, I think we're gonna have to go to this. What's going on? Already uh, people are starting to talk around the newsroom, what, what's happening? Two fatalities, three fatalities. I started to get chills and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, we have to go. We have to get there. Police say she entered the Pleasantville Road exit ramp, crossed over oncoming traffic, and then traveled south for 1.7 miles in the northbound lanes. State police investigators are also finding it hard to understand why the trip home, which started at this campground in Sullivan County, ended in tragedy. Just very sad about it. You know, we well missed. It was a very good family. Neighbors say Schuler was on her way home from camping, a favorite family trip they did almost every weekend. She could have drove that blindfolded. She knew that, like the back of her hand. I'll never forget the accident scene itself. The caravan that was on the median and it was burnt and there was another car across the way in the Taconic and there was a, there was someone outside of the window dead. And I just thought to myself, wow, I've never seen an accident scene like this in my life. State police now say witnesses saw a minivan like Schuler's with children inside on Route 17 and the New York State Thruway driving erratically and aggressively. Driving in an erratic manner on Route 17 and Route 87. Um, straddling the lanes, uh, flashing the lights, tailgating, um, cutting in and out of traffic. And the toxicology reports they say prove she was actually drinking and smoking pot along the journey from upstate. So we thought at first something had to be medically wrong. Yeah. But then we find out about two days later that she was drunk and that she was high. Mm -hmm. Prosecutors now say Schuler was in fact under the influence of marijuana and alcohol at the time of the wrong way crash last week on the Taconic. The toxicology report finds she had a blood alcohol content of 0.19, more than twice the legal limit while she was behind the wheel of her minivan with five kids inside. I remember, I remember how I felt when we heard the results of the toxicology report. Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't remember if somebody told me. I don't remember if I read it, but I remember feeling just uh, really just just. And we were reporters, and we were trying to keep it real and straight. But that was like a, like a moment of humanity. Where I, damn, yeah. I really wish that wasn't it. Why did that have to be it? Yeah. And we didn't know how it got there. We didn't know what had transpired. But it just felt bad. That's how I felt. None of us had ever seen her with a drink in her hand. I never saw her with anything, not even a cigarette. She didn't indicate specifically what was bothering her, but it was obviously obvious something was wrong because her brother did ask her to pull over and state he would come up and locate her. As reporters, we um, did a chronological order and we used surveillance video to show where she was and what she was doing. Police say Schuler was seen at this McDonald's about 15 minutes away from the campsite, where witnesses say she appeared to be fine. Then, sometime later, a red Ford Arrowstar minivan that police believed to be Schuler's was seen driving erratically on Route 17 and Interstate 87, straddling two lanes of traffic. At the Ramapo service station, witnesses say she drove over a grass medium. Traveling that route, the minivan should have hit the Tappan Zee Bridge around 11, 11.15. So we saw that she stopped at the McDonald's to get something to eat for her and her and the kids. Then she had stopped at a gas station and we saw her go in, possibly ask for something, maybe aspirin. I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was but, aspirin. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And that was one of my assignments. I didn't mean to cut you off. That was it. My photographer and I, we went up. 
we went up and we made those stops. But it wasn't until 1.02 that state police say she called her brother, supposedly told him she wasn't feeling well. And it was right over here along the side of the road that a motorist found her cell phone just east of the Tappan Zee Bridge. We've been able to determine that the last phone call to her brother occurred at 1.10 p.m. And at, from that point, we believe she traveled north on one of the parkways. Everywhere, and it was such a, I mean, to the campsite, and, and you know, drove it back down. And it was, for lack of a better word, sobering uh, to retrace those steps, to know that's where she had her last moments. The campground's owner is keeping the Schuler site off limits until someone from the family can come back up. But we're told it looks something like what you see here. And they'd been coming here for three summers now. So the owner said she'd gotten to know Diane. She'd gotten to know her as a polite and reserved woman. It's 1.35 in the afternoon. It's not at night. It's not after maybe we had a couple of drinks at dinner and went. It's 1.35 in the afternoon. Correct. To have that amount of substance mm -hmm. yeah I mean which goes and back to well we'll never really know what transpired but and we will sad. never know what transpired in that caravan never with the girls right and especially Emma she was nine years old at the time so you have to wonder you know did Emma know what was going on I believe she did she was a smart girl eight-year-old Emma had told her father over the phone that something was very wrong with her aunt Diane Schuler. The girls just called in distress. They said that the, the aunt is driving very erratically. We think she's sick, and we're, we're trying to locate the kids. And they, the best they could, the best they could come up with was that they were on, they were at the Tarrytown Rest Center. The community of Floral Park and the surrounding communities, or even if you were just a parent, or not even a parent, you, your heart went out to this family. Yeah. To see those three caskets, those three white caskets come out of Our Lady of Victory Church in Floral Park, there wasn't a dry eye mm. anywhere. On a human level, I can think of only two words I said, too young and too soon. To those who remain faithful to you, O Lord, life is not ended, it is merely changed. What we ask all of you going forward is that you keep my girls, my sister, and my niece, and all of us in your daily prayers. Warren Hand spoke clearly and calmly up until his final words. Love your children. Cherish your children. <laughs> Kiss your children. <laughs> you know, we covered the funerals. We covered all of the funerals as reporters, and it's the toughest thing to ever yeah. do. And even afterward, you don't even want to go up to anybody right. and like, mm -mm. what are you going to say right. to them? What are you going to ask? There's nothing. Yeah. All there is is lots of tears, hugs, and support, and what else? You know, th at that point, it is so extremely emotional to see something like that happen that you think as a reporter, you know, you've never seen anything like that before. There's only certain stories in your, in your lifetime that really get you. Mm -hmm. And this one was it for me. There is one small miracle among so much tragedy. Five-year-old Brian Schuler somehow survived the crash. Warren Hans, the Floral Park man whose three daughters were killed, reminded mourners about who he called the miracle child, his five-year-old nephew, Brian, who survived the crash. He's a boy, his uncle said, who will grow up to be loved more than he'll ever understand. Will life go on now for you, focusing on your son? Absolutely. I promised my wife I will take care of my son the way she wanted me to. That's what I'm going to do. I followed that story for three months, mm. every day. And uh, at the end, really, there was nothing other than the toxicology reports and the turn of events and witness accounts. Uh, we have witness accounts of people on the road, mm -hmm. on the Taconic, who not only saw her sick on the side of the road, but also in the last moments before the crash, there were people calling 911 saying, I'm seeing a woman in a caravan full of children right. driving the wrong way on the Taconic. Right. So now you're getting all those phone calls and it's happening so fast. 
How could she have gone the wrong way on the Taconic? There are signs everywhere saying wrong way, this way. Mm -hmm. And even after the accident, they actually installed more signs. Five different hearses made their way to Our Lady of Victory Roman Catholic Church. That's the hard part yeah. of, of us doing that type of story. You know, everyone looks at us like, how could you do that? How could you be there? But we're there because we know that we don't want these lives to, you know, not, we don't want people to not remember these girls. And we want to let people know that they were important. Right. All of these people in the car, in all three cars, we want to let people know that all of these lives were important. And this accident was tragic, yes, but their legacies will live on. Warren and Jackie Hans, my lord, I, I mean, who lost their three daughters and now have another, the strength in these people. They created the, fa the foundation, the EAK, EAK Foundation, named after the three girls. Life goes on as hard as it is, but uh, with a community like this, it's, it's impossible not to. And even though I've had such a tragedy in my life, I have a lot of blessings. So, and and uh, they, they can, I feel them all the time. Their time here was important and it meant something and they continue to change lives every single day. Beautiful May, they do this whole, uh, you know, fundraiser. It's all about instilling confidence in young girls and this and that. And I interviewed them six years ago on that day where it's a 5K and what have you. And you try to, you know, prep for that interview. And just for them to sit down with me and, and really, you know, just to even do it. And all I wanted to know, and I know the first question I asked was just tell me about them. Just tell me about them. What kind of kids were that? What did they tell you? Them? Know? Oh, and one was just, you know, had, she was always the first one up and had to be at breakfast on time. And the other one just woke up with a smile, went to bed with a smile. And the, uh, the other was just the mommy's girl. And it was, and you could see the pain on their faces, but you could still see all that love come through. And, and you know, just they still kind of lit up when they talked about them.